Hi, I'm Tim Altman, naturopath, breathing coach, medical therapist, and paddling coach. Today I'm going to talk about nutrition, and it's a subject with so many different inputs. There's many, many different theories that come out via magazines and media and social media about what to eat, how to eat, when to eat, this new program, that new program. There's different things in vogue all of the time. Yet the ones that work and the ones that make sense generally have some basic common principles and guidelines. And we're going to discuss what I believe is, is, is the main principles or guidelines. And that, if you look at all of the research that's been done over the years, there's been some common denominators about nutrition that when you follow those, then it makes a massive difference and you're on the right track. And the thing that reson has resonated most with me that, that the principle that fits in with most of those guidelines is looking at the evolutionary medicine approach to nutrition. That is comparing what we're built to eat or what we evolved to eat with how we eat now. And what we understand from anthropological and genetic research is it takes tens of thousands of years for evolution to take place. And some research has indicated that it takes 40 to 100,000 years for a change in our environment to be assimilated by our bodies. So what that basically means is the way we should eat, the way we're built to eat, or the way we've evolved to eat, is the way our hunter-gatherer hunter ancestors ate some 40,000 to 100,000 years ago. It's not the caveman diet, it's how our hunter-gatherers ancestors ate. And basically, the way they ate was they lived off the land. They ate what they could access living off the land. So they, depending on the climate they came from, but in summary, they ate, their protein came from animals, whether it be animals off the land, birds, eggs, fish, depending on what they had exposure to. So they got, they got their protein and they got meat from animals and fish and birds, etc. They also ate lots of nuts and seeds, they drank water, and they most of their carbohydrates came from vegetables and fruit. In fact, they, let, they ate lots of vegetables and fruit. Maybe some wild grains, but not a lot. So that's the basic guidelines about what we should eat or how we've evolved to eat. And if you compare that to how we eat now, it's drastically, drastically different. And I wanna talk about one of the major changes is the presence of the biggest change I believe that has occurred, and it's certainly uh, echoed in a lot of the theories from some of the evolutionary biologists and evolutionary medicine specialists, is that the presence of carbohydrate in our food chain has gone through the roof. And that's probably the most significant change from what we've evolved eating as hunter-gatherers or what our hunter-gatherer ancestors would have eaten, and what we know of how hunter-gatherer cultures, even current hunter-gatherer cultures, of which there are not many lived at left how they eat compared to how we eat now and our carbohydrate content now is through the roof and it makes a significant significant impact on our health quite dramatically and if you look at the, the changes in our food chain it started with the agricultural revolution where we started being able to farm and grow crops etc and, and a lot of those were starchy vegetables and grains so that it started the increase in carbohydrate started there I went through to the industrial revolution where we started bringing in foods from other countries that were higher carbohydrate, light sugar, but we also started processing and stripping our grains uh, and, and introducing some levels of food processing. And then we go to the technological revolution and it went mental. Added sugars here, uh, massive amount of food processing. We add all sorts of chemicals to our food chain via um, farming methods, via additives, preservatives, etc., etc. So the carbohydrate content has certainly gone through the roof. And obviously the other added things like added chemicals have made a difference as well. And basically, so the added carbohydrate affects us in that makes most people's blood sugar levels fluctuate over the day. It makes us hypoglycemic. Um, and we become then what we call insulin, mildly insulin resistant. Clinical insulin resistance you'll see as type two diabetes, but most of us become mildly insulin resistance, resistant, which means that we produce energy inefficiently and we become inflammatory inside. And most of the chronic illnesses we suffer from are inflammatory by nature. So what we have to do is look at, well, how do we, where do we access our carbohydrate from as hunter gatherers? We accessed our carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables mostly. 
And really, we, some of the research is indicating now that we need to eat about nine full serves, nine handfuls, your handfuls, of vegetables and fruit per day. And most of those handfuls of vegetables and fruit should be handfuls, not of starchy vegetables like potatoes and sweet potatoes, etc. We should aim for about one of those. But most of it should come from vegetables other than those and fruits. With regards to fruits, people... Fruit gets a bad rap for being high in sugar, but if you eat fruit that is seasonal to the climate you come from, you won't have an issue. So fruit is not bad for you and high in sugar. If you eat tropical fruits all the time and you live in a temperate climate like where I'm from and winter is cold, then yeah, that fruit is higher in sugar. But if you eat the fruit that's seasonal to the climate you're from, you're not gonna have a problem. And if you look at the research out there on a high intake of fruit and vegetables and prevention of chronic illness and boosting the immune system, it is phenomenal. To the extent that the more you have, the better you function. The more you have, the more you prevent chronic illness. And it doesn't just go up and plateau, it keeps going up. So the more veggies and fruit you can eat, the better off you'll be. And that's where we need to source our carbohydrates from. Rather than sourcing it, if you look at it now, we source our carbohydrates from grains and we got fed this whole idea that we have to have lots of grains processed foods, starchy vegetables like potatoes, sweet potatoes, etc., lots of legumes, and vegetables sort of come second after all of that, or third, third or fourth or fifth after all of that, whereas we should make vegetables the main source of our carbohydrates with some fruit, and that if, if we follow that sort of a program, then you will absolutely thrive. I've had clients follow that sort of program where they cut out all grain, cut out starchy, vegetables for a month just to try and see how they go and they eat a diet that's basically a hunter-gatherer diet and most of them absolutely flourish they absolutely thrive energy wise i get asked a lot what is the ideal dot what is the best way to work with my gut microbiome because of unfortunately the way we eat now messes up the way our gut works and our microbiome gets out all out of whack and so we have to bring in gut protocols and detox diets etc etc but the best way to eat for your gut microbiome is to eat the way you're built to. If you eat the way you're built to, your gut will absolutely flourish. And those sort of eating programs can make a massive difference. In some cases, a lot of cases, like people with IBS, etc., we need to bring in other programs to clean out the damage that's already been done and then go on a program like that. But the hunter-gatherer diet makes a massive, massive difference. So there's some, uh, an example of, we'll, we'll have a series of these sort of nutrition chats where I'll go into other aspects, but the, the best way you can eat is to eat the way you're built to. Imagining if you're ever in doubt and I, at the supermarket thinking, well, could I, should I eat this? Just think, would I have eaten that one I wanted the bush? And you can't go too wrong.